Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at some of the ways that you can create and use patterns in Adobe XD. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So you can see I have an artboard here, a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. I've added an image just to show some of the ways that you can apply these patterns onto an image to subtly enhance it, but you don't have to have an image. You can do this just as part of a graphic or on a plain background, it's entirely up to you. So first of all, I'm just gonna right click the image and select lock so I don't move it by mistake. I feel like I'm a little bit in the way here as well, so I'm just gonna move me out of the way. There we go, much, much better. So first of all, I'm just gonna create a diagonal line pattern. And to do that, I'm gonna zoom out, move this over here. You can press space bar to get the little hand as well and you can click and drag around to easily navigate around your different artboards. And I'm just gonna grab the line tool from the toolbar on the left. And we could click and do a vertical line. We could do a horizontal line or a diagonal. And we can hold shift on the keyboard to snap to those predetermined angles as well. So I'm gonna do a diagonal line. We'll just move this over here. If you are doing a diagonal, just make sure that your diagonal line does clear the overall height of your artboard or the graphic that you like to apply the pattern to. So some patterns you can repeat both vertically and horizontally to infinity and beyond, to quote Buzz Lightyear, but with diagonal lines, it's a little bit tricky to do that. You can do it, but it's just a bit more complicated. So just make sure it's taller than your graphic. And once you've done that, select the repeat grid button over here, Boing. and it turns green. And we can now extend this out to the right. And you can see it does create some additional lines, but they have a ton of space in between them. So we've got to close that gap. So just hover over somewhere until you see the pink area. It's a bit tricky with diagonal lines. It does look a bit crazy. And what you'll see in a minute is even more crazy. So if we click and drag to the left, you'll see it brings the lines in. And as I said, it does get all kinds of crazy here. We've got a lot of pink, but the thing to pay attention to is the position of the lines. So if I just let go, we'll, we'll take a breather, we'll zoom in, and then we can go and continue to adjust this. And you can see as I bring this out or in, I can extend that pattern. And I can make further adjustments by hovering over the pink and just extending these lines to make the diagonal lines further apart or bring them closer together. So it depends entirely on what you're going for. I'll go for something like this. And once I've created that diagonal line pattern, as I say, I can extend this all the way out over my image. So there we go. We've now got our diagonal line pattern and I can click this. And you can see what I've done is I've actually selected the background image, but it is locked but it is still selectable. So if you have any difficulty selecting the right thing, just go to your layers panel and click that there. There we go. So we've got the right thing selected and from the property inspector on the right, I could change the color. So we could go for some black lines, red lines, or white lines, it looks quite cool. Let me bring the opacity down, make them really subtle. And we can go into the size value and this is a really, really cool trick. You can actually click in here, you can enter a value and press return, or you can use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to adjust the value. So you can very quickly get a preview of how something's going to look, change those values nice and quick. So I think I'll go for something like this. I could then maybe go back, mess around with colors a bit more. You can see I can kind of give this like a really, really nice tint. I think I might go for might go for black in this example, actually. Adjust that opacity a bit more. Looks pretty cool. And that's just one way that you can use a pattern to enhance an image. So that's one pattern. That's pretty cool. What I might do is just move this over here. In fact, actually, what I could do before I do that is I could flip this horizontally as well. So we get like a, a crosshatch effect. Now you can't actually flip a repeat grid group, but what you can do is if you go to object, or if you're on PC, what you can actually do as well is right click and select ungroup, and then right click again and select group. So this is no longer a repeat grid group. However, if we go over to the property inspector, we now have the flip horizontally option 
flip horizontal option. That, that sounds really weird. Flip horizontal option that is uh, has been added in one of the more recent updates to XD, and it will flip this around. So if I just undo that a moment and press Command or Control D, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, it will duplicate the selected object. Then what we're going to do is flip it. And if I zoom in, you can see it's uh, incredibly thick. So I could just bring that that line sizing down a little bit. Remember, open the layers panel if you do struggle to select anything in particular. So I'm just dropping the value just so we can actually see the image underneath. And there we go, we've gone from having a diagonal line to a cross hatching effect as well. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this. But anyway, let's go and create another pattern now. So we'll go back to the beginning and I'll grab the ellipse tool this time, just left click and hold shift to create a circle. And we'll deselect the fill and we'll just, uh, let's do something with some color. Let's add a bit of color in here. So we'll go for like a pink or something. And then maybe what we can do is hold down Alt and Shift and click and drag. And what that does is create a copy. Holding Alt creates your copy. Holding Shift will snap it in line, whether it's horizontally or vertically. So there we go, something like that. We could maybe change the color of this one. I'm literally just making this up as I go along, so this could look quite terrible. So again, hold Alt, Shift, click and drag. And yeah, maybe we'll change this. Something like that. So we've got three colored rings. Let's uh, let's see where this goes. So I'm gonna hold shift and click to select all of them. And again, click the repeat grid button and let's see how this extends out. So this is probably gonna work a little bit more effectively extending vertically as well. That's the really cool thing about this is once you've created the kind of base pattern, you can extend it both horizontally and vertically to infinity and beyond. There we go. So you can see it starts to get pretty crazy. So let's look for those vertical ones. There we go. Remember, just hover over the pink. Whew, that is pretty crazy. And I'm just making this up as I go along. So I'm sure what you come up with is going to be infinitely better than this. <laughs> wow. I think that's kind of hurting my eyes a little bit. So we could even click that. We could just drop the opacity. But... You can see, I mean, you might even have that pattern not actually over an image. You might just create patterns out of solid colors and different shapes, but that's, uh, that's definitely more interesting than the last one. And actually something else I'm just gonna show you quickly. If I uh, bring the opacity of this back up, you can see here that I'm applying this pattern to an entire artboard. You might not want to do that. You might have a specific area or a box or a circle or something that you want to kind of crop this pattern that you're creating to. So let's just say we had uh, like a graphic, a web graphic or something, and it was this shape. So I'm just using the rectangle tool. And we'll deselect the border. So we have a white rectangle. This is on top of the pattern. And I'm going to hold shift as well to select the pattern. So I've now got the shape, the white rectangle and the pattern selected. And what I can do is go to object, or if you're on PC, you'll right click instead and just select the option mask with shape. And you can see it crops that pattern to the shape that I created. So that's how you can have a, a pattern crop to a shape within an artboard if you didn't want it to apply to the whole thing. And you can double click on this and go back inside, adjust the crop, the pattern, and then click back out and it will stay cropped. So that's how you would crop it anyway. But let's go, let's go and do one more. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna grab the pen tool for this one left click and I'm going to hold shift so we get that nice 45 degree line. Oh, and you can see those smart guides nicely line everything up. So there we go. We've got uh, we've got a zig. And if we just select the repeat grid button, we can now create a zag and another zig and another zag. And remember, hover over the pink, bring these together. There we go, something like this fantastic and extend this vertically and this is pretty cool with something like a zigzag you can really control exactly how you want everything to look so we'll go for something like this and we'll do the old 
the extending this out trick. So because this isn't a diagonal line, we don't have to worry about clearing the height of our image. Like I say, some patterns you can extend them horizontally and vertically infinitely. Some patterns uh, just don't really repeat in that same way as easily. So of course what we can do is we could go here again, uh, pick a color, we'll go with white, click in the size box and use the up and down arrow keys. If they're gonna work, there we go. To adjust the width of the pattern or the border. So there we go, that's pretty cool. And I'm just gonna bring this down. Hey, that looks pretty awesome. And then actually, if you didn't want to do this as part of a graphic that you were working on in XD, we could just bring the opacity all the way back up to 100%. And then with this object selected, you can actually just go to File, down to Export, Selected. And then what you can do is actually set the format from this dropdown to SVG. Now what this stands for is Scalable Vector Graphic. So we can export as an SVG, Select these options here, embed. We don't want to optimize anything, or you can do if you like, it's entirely up to you. Click export, and it will export an SVG file that you can then open in Illustrator. So if you wanted to create like a pattern like this really quickly in XD, you can then export it from XD, open it in Illustrator, and voila, you've got a pattern that you can use. So this, it's a really quick way of creating patterns that you can then go and use in other applications as well. But there we go, that's some of the ways that you can create and use patterns all in Adobe XD. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or comments, please do drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. You're a rebel, getting into trouble.